Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to talk and learn about calendar template screen into Power Apps. So whenever you want to work with calendars, then this screen or cal calendar template screen would be a right fit, right set of functions or formulas you can use out of it to build out any calendar events. For example, right now I have this one calendar open for me, which is having multiple calendars inside it. If I click on this calendar, it loads my Outlook events. If I go to my current day, then it shows my current Outlook events. And if I change it to my travel event, then it would be load my custom events from my custom list, which is actually like holding all my custom events. So over here with the selection of these calendar, the monthly view, I can change it. I can reset my selection, go back and forth into my calendar just like that using my this calendar template screen so it's very easy to build easy to configure as well as easy to integrate any custom sharepoint list having the custom events so let's talk about it in real time so i'm just closing this this one and starting one new screen and we'll build a new app for my calendar demo i'll choose blank canvas app and once the app is created we will add one default screen so over here i am going to go to new screen and i'll choose i'll go to templates inside template i would be have one default template related to calendar and when i click on it it will actually bind or load all the galleries or required galleries and controls which we require to build out any calendar or have the event shown so over here right now you can see the default calendar is loaded it's having on the right hand side it's having the area to show the events for the selected date and on the left we have this drop down and if i actually run this one for a while then you will see like i have these multiple drop down values which is nothing but all type of calendars into my office 365 right now so it's loading all the calendars by default so if i go to calendar so it's nothing but the outlook office calendar only and i can actually move and forth with between the dates and actually click on this so by default we have the all the skeleton ready but over here because we have to work with the calendar so we should be going in detail for all the calendar controls what's happening inside it because if you want to extend the screen to make this calendar look like a i mean monthly calendar full calendar view in the entire screen then you should be aware about the formula which are used inside to make this work and then later on we'll create one uh, more option that would be binded to a sharepoint list calendar so that we can show the custom events as well so let's talk about control by control and i'll just use my size of this screen and first thing is this drop down so this calendar drop down is having items binded to office ccy outlook calendar get table so the whatever option we saw in the drop down list is coming from this office of uh, 365 calendar so we obviously we are going to remove it because we just want our calendar as well as one custom uh, list events so we'll remove this final one but uh, just talk about it then later on we'll customize it and if i go to on select event of this drop down you will see like i have a detailed formula which is actually initializing my entire variables if you look over this we have this user domain it's a variable so if it's a blank then we are doing it initialization for the first time so if you are familiar with uh, writing the formulas into power apps then it's easy to understand so it's actually creating one show loading uh, local variable and after that setting up the user domain to the email current email address of the person and then setting up the date selected as today so by default you see this blue circle which is because of this variable which we are using and if i just scroll down into my space and we'll see that we are setting up by default first day of month and which is being calculated like date at today my one minus today so that means today minus today plus one which gives me always the first day of the month and the same way we are going to find out the first day in view because this view if i just minimize this one you will see like my calendar 
or this default calendar template is starting from Sunday. So for this, we have to find out the first day of the week. So it's easy to find out with this formula. First day in view. And last day of the month, again, like for the last day of the month, we are doing the same calculation. The last day of the current month, which is same as first day of the next month, minus one day. So that's being written over there in this formula. So by default, you get all these formula initiated. If you're working on your custom screen as well, then you would require this set of formula to find out which is the first day of my month and the last day of my month. So it's a pretty handy uh, formulas which is already written into this template screen. So just make use of it rather than like using your uh, brain to optimize the formula. So just use it. And then we are setting the visibility of calendar. So this control is being used to set the visibility of control uh, calendar. And finally, we have this min date and max date. This will decide the range of events which we want to show. So main date is is deciding factor what all events should be retrieved from starting date. And the max date would be set to the last viewable day in the calendar. So the formula is first day in view plus 40 days. And the calendar displays the maximum 41 days. So over here, you look over here. So we have this uh, 42 row items added to it because it this can display at a time 41 days only. And in this gallery, we are wrapping or the calendar template screen are wrapping this item. If I select this control, which is monthly gallery over here, and if I expand, we have this comprises of title, subcircle, and circle to highlight the current selected date. And right now this screen has the default 41 items added to it. So it's 42 items because we are starting from zero. So that's why it's displaying 41. And if I go to the wrap property of this control, you will see that it's being wrapped count with a seven. So that only one, only seven days can appear in one row. So that's critical. Like if you are going to make a full calendar view of this, then just remember this, have a gallery control, wrap that to seven and use the default uh, formulas. And if I go back or minimize this one and go back to this seven control, so you'll find like move forward and next word again, like loaded with the formulas that is to move uh, back, backward and forth for one week time. So again, you can, revisit or utilize these formulas when you are going to make your own calendar control. Pretty handy set of formulas, minimizing it and then going directly to our calendar gallery. So again, I talked about like we are specify 41 items to it. And if I actually go to title because title displays the name or the num uh, day number. So this is the first day in, in view, the variable which we already set with that value. Time unit is days. And if I go to this on change of it, because I want to display or we want to display the events which are related to this date. And we will find that formula on select of it. So I'm just iterating all the formulas which is already there so that we can understand what's happening in this calendar control or the event, the uh, entire screen. So on select, it's setting up the date selected from first day of in view, this item time unit. Go to fill property of it. You will find that over here, some if conditions are written because over here, if you look at it, we are having a blue selected date if it's today's, today's date and then grays if the range is going out of our current month. So this is being driven through this formula where we are deciding that a date selected is today then we should fill this with rgb 00 if it's today when not selected then it should actually do a fade of uh, this 0 0.67 and as well as if i go to this uh, else part which is abs absolute self dot text minus this item value is greater than 10 so it's very what it describes is like we are getting an abs uh, absolute value out of the self text value, which is let's say in our case, uh, let's say this 31 and the this dot item value. So self text dot text is 31, but item value is 
probably like somewhere 39 if it's greater than 10 that means like we have to darken this a bit because it's going out of this month's range so if uh, the same way if i minimize this formula so you will see 30 first is a bit shaded why because the first cell value is uh, 31 but the item number is first it's zero so that is greater than 10 so it has to be uh, grayed out so which actually concludes that it's a out of our current month's range so though like we need not to um, worry much about it because everything is written but just for our understanding that what these formulas are so that's why i'm describing it and as soon as we click on uh, some cell then it should display this uh, events over here into our this calendar event gallery if i expand this one you will find that i have this body subject description and title or location for these events which are selected for this and if i go to this events items and expand this formula you will see like we are actually filtering my calendar event which is a collection which we are creating in the initialization the calendar drop down selection part itself and we are passing the start date and end date so that we can filter out the events out of that range only so this gallery would uh, show the filtered events per that range so now the next part as i said because right now if i run it it just takes the outlook type of calendars calendar drop down we have this items bind it to the office outlook calendar get tables so over here what we can do we can just simply have this bind it to our uh, custom calendar so i'll just say calendar so because i want to show the outlook events as well so that's why i am using default as calendar but second one is my custom events and for this custom events we are going to use one list into sharepoint so right now is one of the list which is created in sharepoint let's say lecture so lecture is my custom event so this lecture is happening with this subject at location this and the time is this so we are going to use this list to show the calendar events over here as well so right now we have done this but we are getting few errors so i'll just go to errors one by one and we'll change some of stuff so that we shall we should have a proper formula running for us so over here what, what the problem is that this calendar my calendar dot name would not be there so for timing you can just simply say is calendar by default let's say and i'm just minimizing this though like we are going to update the formula once again but just removing all the errors for timing and i am going to scroll down and over here as well i am just going to specify my this calendar as calendar which is outlook calendar just to remove the error over here it's also fine i'll just minimize it and we'll go to this other formula which is using this calendar name once again and we'll again change this to our calendar name and this last one is just change this to default so default let's say i want calendar only so i just set the default so right now i did actually just updated my drop down with this value so by default is calendar so if i click on calendar go to my these dates so i should have this event displayed to me but i need to check like which connector i am using or in the data source which connector is there so it's with the wrong account so that's why it's not fetching my events i'll remove it quickly and add office 365 outlook with my connection so that it should display my events so as soon as this is refreshed we'll start getting my outlook calendar events so i have added my outlook connector and now once i run it and we'll just go to calendar and right now you see like i have this my this outlook event created over there if i just move on to the dots which has the events so calendar is working fine now the second part of my custom calendar 
so as i said i'll be going to my this drop down on select event and over here on selection chain i wish to have my calendar to set as if my selected value is this calendar then it should show the events of my outlook calendar otherwise it should show the events from my custom calendar so for that i'll just have this one if statement in place if my drop down selection selected tax dot value equal to calendar then i should actually use this collection to be updated from this outlook calendar so i'll just cut this paste it otherwise i just want my this collection the calendar collection to be driven from my custom list which is nothing but my this lectures list i'll just add that connector as well so right now i haven't added so let me just put the blank and save it once so before i add that my sharepoint connector with that list i'm just going to sharepoint adding my site choosing my list that is lectures and because now it's added i can use this lectures to directly bind to my calendar events so right now if you look at it i have this in the form like if you bind this collection with the form this calendar i calendar so it will say subject start date and then html body so that's why i kept these columns as start and end so that it can automatically bind to the same columns in the my collection so right now i have done and i can save it we are having some error let's correct that error so it is closed properly but this we have this capital i so now it's fine i'm just saving it and running our custom event so this calendar has two options now if i go to custom events it populated custom event and if i click on this dates it has started showing my custom event which is driving from one of the sharepoint list so it's very simple to have this calendar in place into your any of the power apps and you can actually utilize the calendar based on a requirement you can have it a full calendar view or a monthly view or a weekly view based on uh, your requirement but the key thing is like all the inbuilt inbuilt formulas are there just try to leverage those formulas integrate that to your custom events as well like if you wish to so i thought like uh, i find it very significant and useful when you work with calendar so you may also and if you actually like learn something from this video please do like and subscribe to my channel thank you